Welcome to the Sweet Soup Show. <laughs> I welcome every one of you all over the world. Those of you who are watching me from the US, Europe, and Africa, especially Nigeria, I'm using this opportunity to welcome you to our maiden edition of the Sweet Soup Show. This Sweet Soup Show is to create a salvation field, level playing field for governments, for the church, and all those who sympathize with the issue of the church. God called me to preach the word of salvation throughout the world. And this is where we are. Today we'll be looking at the salvation of the soul. I don't want to spend too much time. I only have two or three minutes for that. Salvation of the soul has to do with deliverance of an individual from harm, from losses and destruction. And that comes through a word that is spoken to the person to transit from the attachment he has spiritually to his lineage. Because we said the, the salvation of the soul. We have a soul attachment to the souls of our lineage. And our lineage has a default mode to send us to hell because they are operating in sin. And sin has to do with disobedience to divine laws. And those laws could be laws we, we, we see daily operating around us. That is why it is important for every one of us to begin to look at how to break out of that default mode that has programmed us for destruction, for losses, and danger. So today, uh, somebody came to our Lord Jesus Christ in uh, John chapter 3, verse uh, 1 up to 9 or 10. He said, in verse 3, he said, Jesus replied, Verily I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And it's a simple thing. Transiting from the soul tie to your ancestry to, tra to, to a new soul tie with God. And God comes in form of Jesus Christ. That we have a, an agreement with him to be our personal Lord and Savior. Lord means he's in charge of the situation of your life. He stands for you as, an, uh, as the attorney, uh, arguing for you in the court of life. Then Savior means helping you to get out of that particular judgment that is upon your life that you will be destroyed here at the end of your days. And you will go to a certain destination which is not right. It is not asking you for money. It's a decision. And you communicate it with your mind. Every court requires that those who are, who are defending their case to talk. You present your argument. And one of it is that you accept God, that's Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. That way you are free. You will now begin to exhibit the freedom to escape every plan of destruction that is set up for, for your life. That is the first part of the reason of our broadcast today. The second part is looking at the laws of the nation as it is now and comparing it to what is in the scriptures. The Bible has answers for all of these things, whether the church agrees or not, or the church is aware of it or not. Now, most of the time we read the Bible, it looks like an history book, and we see that the whole of the Old Testament is to help us to see how God governs the nation, how God rules in the affairs of men. And nobody becomes a member of government without God knowing. So, all the issue of Islamization and so on and so forth, I believe Islam too is a religious body that is under karma. So, let's leave emotion alone. If we know what to do, then we'll be able to achieve our purpose. Now, the church feels that it affects us more because of the level of, of success in the work. Then, the level of the financing that is available to the church, we feel they are targeting our income. Okay, that is true, targeting our income. But we all have a stake in Nigeria. We can all have access to where the laws are made. Where are they made? In the National Assembly. The National Assembly have the lower chamber and the upper chamber. Every law begins its process from the lower chamber. We can always take this same law. We have pastors who are lawyers. We have members of the church who are big lawyers. They can come together, draft a review or something like an adjustment or they call it amendment and send it to the lower house of assembly. If we feel that one is summer, we can always go to court for 
proper interpretation. How do we interpret this law that we favor us? If they say uh, somebody has a power to remove our trustee, we can argue it in the court of law and say why they will not have the power is that they did not give us the money. If you don't give me any money, you don't have any power to ask me. If government gives us grants as an NGO, they cannot supervise the expenses and they cannot em em employ somebody from outside to sit on our trustee. It must be a member of our organization that is ratified by the organization. So, but all of these can be placed in the laws. We cannot say our government should not supervise our work. If we go to them to register the same organization, but we can tell them how it can be done, we can all join together to draft the laws. We cannot be continue to be sensational. Let's go to the right appropriate channels to correct these anomalies. And I believe, let me quickly read a place to us in Hebrew chapter 7, verse 11 to 12. It will, it will <laughs> interest you to know this. He said, it therefore, if therefore perfection we are by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people re receive the law, under the Levites, the people receive the law. And the first law that instituted the Levites to be the one that gave the law was brought by Moses. Moses was the one that went to Mount Sinai and spent 40 days and 40 nights to get the first set of law to rule Israel. The Israelites were ruled by law. The first laws were Ten Commandments. Then there were thousands of other laws that followed that as subsections and sections under the Ten Commandments that made the acts of ruling Israel easy. Israel was a nation. Every nation upon the face of the earth were ruled, are ruled by laws. So if the Levites were, have been instituted by an act to be the one that will rule the nation, to bring laws, then Something happened here. The Levitical order changed. It moved to Judah. And Judah was not under the law. It was not captured under the laws of Moses to be the one that will be given law. And this was what is being discussed here. He said, the, uh, for under it, the people received the law. What for further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not called after the order of Aaron. Aaron was a Levite. But Melchizedek does not belong to the Levite race. Neither does he belong to any race. But Jesus came from Judah. In verse 12, he said, For the priesthood being changed, there is, made for, there is need for, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. That means the law must be changed. So that it will accommodate the coming of Judah in releasing law to the people. So, if God can capture this, God is the one that started all this issue of releasing laws and laws and laws and laws. It's there in the Bible. And they amend, they adjust. So, what is the process of amending laws in Nigeria? That is the question. You go to the National Assembly, you go and argue it with documents. Let the lawyers go, they know how to do it and then follow it up till the amendment is done. You can go to court and ask for a stay that the one that is presently in use should not be used. The, the court can grant a stay or let everybody go to status quo. What is the law operating before? Everybody will go to that one till they will argue this one out. So, by tomorrow, we shall be coming to this our program, the Sweet Soup Show. And we will be taking another law in Nigeria that is also necessary or other news that need to be looked at from the perspective of the Bible. I believe you will be saved. I believe you will transit from your old order. That is, you need to be saved. The church needs to be saved. The individual needs to be saved. The family needs to be saved. The business needs to be saved. So that is one of the reasons why you are being called today on the Sweet Soup Show. Obetudu. God bless you. My name remains Reverend Oladipu for Smith. If you want us to make any announcement for your church or for your organization, 
you can always call my number 081 87 